Awards for Lighting the Chalice are from the International Council of Unitarian and Universalists for December 2020 from the Czech Unitarians. For millennia, fire has been in the centre of human communities. Our ancestors used to gather around it. Today, we are assembling around this flame to renew our community. May the flame of our chalice make this community warmer and stronger. Amen. Welcome. Thank you, Margaret and George. Hello and welcome to Glasgow Unitarians annual Christmas service conducted this year over Zoom because of the pandemic which is affecting us all. I am Barbara Clifford, one of the team of lay speakers in the Glasgow Unitarian Church and I'm really pleased to be here with you today during these difficult times. Coming to worship is not like going to the cinema. In worship we bring our cares and our loves, we bring our failures and our successes and we wait not to be entertained but for the opportunity to share our values. Our concerns are our hopes and our commitments. We affirm each other, we share forgiveness and inspiration, we give shape and depth to our daily lives and show compassion to those we meet. My opening words this morning are from a book called Fill My Stock In, and the editor is Alan Titchmarch. I think everyone would have heard of Alan from his gardening programs on the television. And the piece that I'm going to read is written by Australia poet, Australian poet Pam Brown. We open in our presence, laugh together, sit down to eat, but beyond the window, out there in the darkness are those for whom Christmas brings no respite. Some knew, some knew our world once and have lost it or been exiled from it or had it taken from them. It is right to show our love for one another at Christmas, to share a meal, to exchange gifts, to be happy. But I wish that we privileged few could hear the voices of all those beyond our windows. They are individuals, each complex and unique, valuable as we are. Our first carol this morning will be Joy to the World. Words will appear on the screen and since we're all muted, our voices will not clash so we can sing robustly at home. Our first hymn, Joy to the World, number 96.
Our first reading this morning will now be read by Donald J. Capps, who will read a Christmas prayer. Uh, this is a Christmas prayer from a, a Unitarian Universalist minister in America called Maureen Killeran. And it reads, Not gold, nor myrrh, nor even frankincense would I have for you this season, but simple gifts the ones that are hardest to find, the ones that are perfect, even for those who have everything, if such there be. I would, if I could, have for you the gift of courage, the strength to face the gauntlets only you can name, and the firmness in your heart to know that you, yes you, can be a bearer of the quiet dignity that is the human glorified. I would, if by my intention I, f I could make it happen, have for you the gift of connection, the sense of standing on the hinge of time, touching past and future, standing with certainty that you, yes, you, are the point where it all comes together. I would, if wishing could make it so, have for you the gift of community, a nucleus of love and challenge to convince you in your soul that you, yes, you, are a source of light in a world too long believing in the dark. Not gold, nor myrrh, nor even frankincense would I have for you this season, but simple gifts, the ones that are hardest to find, the ones that are perfect, even for those who have everything, if such there be. Thank you, Donald. And our second reading this morning is by Barry Bell. And he'll now share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Barry. Okay, I'm very pleased, Barbara, that you've invited me to bring my Christmas wish to your service today. My Christmas wish is simple and, I think, very Unitarian. The hope that mankind focus more on the core message of goodwill to all, which lies at the heart of all faiths, and less on the potentially divisive claimed truths, which are also a part of all faiths. I'd like to share with you two very different things which help me to focus in this way if I can get my screen to do what I want it to do. Uh, one is a slightly frivolous pop song which has stayed with me for more than 40 years. The other is a view of the nature of myth as true fiction which I found only recently through one of our Wednesday night Zoom meetings and which I find profoundly helpful. I simply can't accept the whole virgin birth and nativity story thing as literal truth. <coughs> In this, I share common ground with those who do not identify as Christian, with many Unitarians, and also with a pretty significant number of more traditional Christians, including archbishops like Richard Holloway and plenty other Christian ministers, vicars and priests. The pop song I refer to Started in 1975 by Christoberg and is entitled A Spaceman Came Travelling. You'll easily find it on YouTube and elsewhere, and it gives an alternative view of what may have been going on at the time of Jesus' birth. It's a view which I find somewhat more credible than the one presented in the Gospels, and one which puts the simple message, goodwill to all men, at its centre. The other thing I find helpful to maintain my focus is something I learned very recently, uh, and it's by Richard Holloway, who is a former Scottish Episcopal Bishop of Edinburgh and a key member of the Progressive Christian Network. His contention in describing myths as true fiction is that all myths are stories containing eternal truths about the nature of being human and that, as such, 
these stories can become toxic when they are asserted in their entirety as literal and unquestionable truths. I find this both a pretty good explanation of the dangers of fundamentalism of all kinds and a great help for me in actually living with Christmas. The essential thing for me about Christmas, and indeed all religious festivals, is that they encourage mankind to get in touch with our better side, to express love for one another, to be together in beloved community, and to both give and receive goodwill. It is then my Christmas wish that mankind focus more on the core message of goodwill to all, which lies at the heart of all faiths, and less on the potentially divisive claim truths, which are also a part of all faiths. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry. I second him this uh, I keep saying this morning, but it's this evening. We're not used to having evening services. Uh, I second him is our little town of Bethlehem. Our third reading this morning is by John Clifford, and he has chosen a prayer by the Reverend Cliff Reed. Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> Reverend Cliff Reed is the Minister Emeritus of the Ipswich Unitarian Chapel, and this comes from his book, Carnival of Lamps, and is entitled, Unanswered Prayer which starts with a well-known piece of wisdom. Prayer doesn't change things. Prayer changes people and people change things. Oh God, who doesn't seem to answer prayer, who leaves the hungry to starve, the poor to die, the oppressed to suffer and the wars to rage. Why don't you answer prayer if you're there at all? But maybe that's the wrong question. Rather, why don't we, humanity, answer prayer? Why do we leave the hungry to starve when there is food enough to feed them 
and the means to grow more. Why do we leave the poor to die when there are resources enough to heal the sick, clothe the naked, and shelter the homeless? Why do we leave the oppressed to suffer for want of liberation and wars to rage when we could stop them if the will for peace ruled our councils? O God, who can only answer prayer with human hands, human courage, and human caring, stir us to the love that feeds the hungry and heals the sick, strikes down oppression, frees the slaves. You are the will for peace and justice. You are the love that reaches out to us from others in our need. God of our inmost hearts, who calls us to seek you there, may we find you and so become your loving presence in this suffering world. May it be so. Thank you, John. We will now have an interlude played by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra entitled Sleigh Ride. My sermon today is entitled Christmas Wishes in Difficult Times. This world has changed in the decades since I was a little girl. I have changed, you have changed, society has changed, even the weather has changed. Flowers appear earlier in the year, there is less snow and more rain and more severe storms. Most, but not all of us, look forward to this period each year with its annual dreams of a world at peace and of light shining in darkness, focused on a baby who would grow up to be a very special man. Jesus of Nazareth. His story is buried in myth and accounts written a generation after he died, but this story has inspired millions of people for over 2,000 years, including Unitarians for the past two centuries. This year, since we all know the main lines of the story, we will refresh our memories through our carols rather than readings. For some of us, Christmas is a burden, weighed down by sad and distressing memories connected to this time of year. The passing of a loved one, the breakup of a family, failure in some trial they faced, and also for those who struggle unsuccessfully to provide food, not to mention toys and gifts, to those they love. After the surprise announcements yesterday of new restrictions over the holiday period by the political leaders of the British nation, this year may cast a shadow of future Christmases. I'm the youngest of three sisters and remember how we would look forward to Christmas. Money was short. There was less choice of gifts to buy. Food was bought in sparing ways to many shortages. The miners in our areas were not well paid for the, the dangerous underground work, cutting coal out of the earth but it was this money that paid for our Christmas celebration. My grandmother always bought turkey for our dinner and there was plenty of vegetables from our garden. My grandfather was a keen gardener and had a small allotment. There was no shortage of vegetables like carrots, potatoes and cabbage, which he would share with some neighbors who had no money to buy extras for the Christmas period. But my sisters and myself were only interested in what would be in our stockings. Mine was one of my grandfather's big woolen socks, which we hung at the bottom of our beds. My Christmas wish then was for books, sweets, nuts, fruits, and a special gift of a doll. One Christmas Eve, we were lying in bed waiting for Santa. Yes, the same old Santa was around then. 
my big sisters decided to creep down the stairs and see what the noise was. It was our grandparents preparing our presents and I caught glimpses of a big doll dressed in a beautiful blue dress that would walk. I was so excited that my sister placed her hand over my mouth to keep me quiet. The excitement of waiting until the morning to open my presents was a wonderful feeling. Another of my Christmas memories is that it always seemed to snow. December weather was cold, the daylight hours were short, and the evenings were long. We sat around the open fire when we would read our new books and eat sweets from our Christmas stockings. We felt safe and warm, waking up, looking out to white roads and white roofs. I can remember reading in Dylan Thomas's A Child's Christmas in Wales about children enjoying themselves, sledging and throwing snowballs at cats. It was, on the, it was on the afternoon of the day of Christmas Eve and I was in Mrs. Prothero's garden waiting for cats with her son Jim. It was snowing. It was always snowing at Christmas. In my memory, was as white as Lapland, though there were no reindeers, but there were cats. Jim and I would hurl our deadly snowballs at the green of their eyes. End of quote. I'm no longer that five-year-old excited child wanting to open my Christmas stocking. I need to find ways to look at our current situation in a positive way. This Christmas, there's no doubt we have a long, difficult winter ahead of us, made worse by the news of a new strain of the COVID virus. We want life to be back to normal when shops, restaurants and places of entertainment are not closed to the public, when we can take our children and grandchildren to the pantos. Even worse for me, we have been banned from each other's houses. Family is more in family visits on the doorsteps were not so severe in the summer, but now it is more inconvenient with the wet, cold and dark evenings. However, I keep telling myself we are living through difficult times, but there is joy to be found, to be uncovered in our lives. I make a particular note of our Unitarian friends in Edinburgh who immediately provided Sunday worship and a range of other congregational activities via Zoom, supporting all of us in Scotland who wish to join in. Our own congregation provided two midweek Zoom meetings and a determined telephone-based effort to keep everyone in touch, and our monthly newsletter has restarted. So my first Christmas wish in these difficult times is that I wish for everyone that they find some pleasure that helps others. I'll give an example from one of my non-church friends, a friend who did catch and live through the COVID virus, finds her joy in cooking cakes and supplying her neighbours with fresh homemade banana loaf several times a week. I recently visited her at our front door for a chat and as I was leaving, guess what? She gave me a freshly made banana loaf. Imagine the pleasure she has in baking several times a week and knowing our cakes would be well received. I enjoy making pancakes and cooking dinners for my family, which gives real joy to my children and grandchildren. So I wish for everyone that they find some pleasure that helps others. My second Christmas wish is that each of us will look around us and see how lucky we are. Even with all our problems, our society and our world are full of people whose lives are much rougher than ours. There are wars everywhere that makes our wish for peace empty words unless we find practical ways to work for peace. People who cannot feed themselves and their families, 
people who have fled their countries because to remain means almost certain death. Yes, things are certainly tough for us due to COVID restrictions, including the very recent enhanced restrictions. Yes, many people we know have a cold loneliness inside them that seems darker when others celebrate togetherness and light. My first wish was to find some way to help others. My second wish is that we see how lucky we are. In the latest inquiry, our General Assembly President-elect, Anne Mills, wrote, As we approach Christmas each year, we might be forgiven for thinking that commercialism is its sole aim as we rush around preparing for the big day. It is all too easy to ignore the deeper significances of this season. During the past few months, we have heard much about furlough schemes, job losses, the collapse of businesses of all sizes, shortages of goods, rising prices. If our income is stable and sufficient for our needs, we are more fortunate than those already overspent and possibly seriously in debt. If I could have three wishes for Christmas 2020, they would be good health in every respect, a positive, cheerful attitude at all times, and life within a kind, compassionate, considerate community. End of quote. Well, the first vaccine has been approved for use in the UK and distribution has started. Experts believe that this vaccine will be effective against the new mutation of the virus that spreads more e easily. It's also looking like the Westminster government is seriously working at a deal as we close the EU transition at the end of the year. There may even be an announcement in the late news tonight. But probably the biggest change we are facing is global warming. Great damage will be done to our country in the next 20 years. Almost whatever steps we take and many other countries will suffer worse. With results in climate refugees joining war refugees, poverty refugees and political refugees. Against this larger background, I have a wish for our Unitarians. I have a wish for our Unitarian communities that in addition to the various ways we try to meet the needs of our society and world, we find ways to be closer and more cooperative with each other in common action. Kindness towards each other can always be improved and is the glue that makes collaboration and growth possible. But I've spoken enough. If anyone would like to share a Christmas wish for this year or next with the rest of us, please do so in the next few minutes, remembering to be concise as there may be several others who wish to speak. Well, I'd like to share a thought, and that's the, the feeling of sympathy uh, that I have with all the families who have been so disappointed by the latest news, which means that they're not going to be seeing their loved ones. Um, I can think of quite a lot of parents who have been uh, desperate to have their, their children uh, back at home, but because of the new restrictions, that's not possible. I'm very, very grateful that the three of us, that's my, my, my wife and my daughter, are living together in the same house, We'd always planned a Christmas, just the three of us, and that will be possible, and our sympathies go out to those who have been less fortunate. I'm also so grateful my, my elderly mother in the care home, uh, well, she was tested positive for the virus at the end of October. Uh, she suffered nothing worse than a really sore throat. Uh, she was cheerful throughout everything and all the restrictions that were placed up upon her. And on Friday, she was one of the very first people in East Renfrewshire uh, to be given the vaccine. Uh, I'm so grateful uh, for that, that, that wonderful success story, such as touched uh, my family. 
and I am full of sympathy that for those who have been less fortunate. Thank you, Roddy. Thank you. And that, 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 that's a wonderful story to know that your mum is back healthy again. Barbara, if I could just say quickly, it struck me when you were talking about changes and how everything changes, and you mentioned even the weather changes. I mean, and in Scotland, we know that it changes from minute to minute, but in the more general sense, over a lifetime, the, the weather changes. I can always remember my granda saying, uh, telling us the seasons aren't what they used to be, you know. It's not the same anymore. And I found that hard to believe. But, but even in, in my shorter lifetime, I can see there's definitely less snow in the winter. And I, for one, miss that because I love the snow. And the idea of future winters with no snow makes me strangely uh, depressed somehow. And that, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Donald. Well, we'll go on to our last carol, which will be Silent Night, quite appropriate for the end of the evening year. And after that, there will be a short period of silence for your personal reflection. Um, I have some notices here. I think Roddy has already said some words to us about notices. But thanks to those who have helped with our service today, the co-moderators, Ali Briggs and John Clifford, Margaret and George Paxton for the Chalice Words, readers Donald Jacobs and Barry Bell, and all who contributed during our period, sharing period. 
I come in events this week for the Glasgow Church at the Tuesday drop-in will take place next week as usual at, at two o'clock at sorry at eleven o'clock on Tuesday morning. The Wednesday evening discussion group will be at seven o'clock and our next service will be on January the third, twenty twenty one at seven o'clock when Reverend John Clifford will share his reflection on hellos and goodbyes. He tells me that he may even ask if anyone has a new project that they would like to share. Ali Briggs will circulate Zoom links for all these. If visitors today wish to be added to our circulation list, please contact Ali, whose email address is now on the Zoom chat. Edinburgh Unitarians have invited us to Zoom events on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I believe Ali has also circulated their newsletter with times and links. My closing words for my service, Christmas wishes in difficult times are, are by the Reverend Andrew Will, former minister of Edinburgh Unitarians. Honour every person, value what they choose. Good people may differ in their honest views. Hold all, gracious being, firm in your class, shelter and enfold us gently in your grasp. Amen. Very warmest thanks to you, Barbara, for leading in that service. So, so full of in, insights and full, full of, of compassion and kindliness, and so very well supported by all of your uh, collaborators in bringing that service together. Uh, may we all wish you and John a very Merry Christmas, and let's wish a very Merry Christmas to ourselves. Thank you, one and all. Yeah, and I wish everyone a Merry Christmas as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.